subscribe and click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the alignment of shapes on a page. So far in this section, we've looked quite a lot at structure. We've looked at things like groups, containers and layers, but there is one last topic in relation to structure. And that is the tools and techniques that are associated with arranging shapes on pages. And for this, we're going to start with something called the Z order. So let's jump in and just create ourselves a brand new drawing. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place a number of shapes on this page. So let's load up our stencil. And for this, I just want the basic shape stencil. Let's grab a rectangle and drag that onto the drawing. I'm going to make that slightly bigger. And by looking at this, I think currently I don't have a theme set, which is why I'm having, that's right, so no theme. So let's just apply some kind of theme so that we get some colors when we add these shapes on. So let's go for this Zephyr theme again. So now I'm going to add a circle. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And I'm also going to change the fill color of this so that it stands out from the other one. And then finally, let's just add a hexagon onto this page as well, make that a little bit bigger. And let's fill that with a different color again. Let's do a nice blue color. Now, when we're talking about the Z order, the way that you need to think about this is imagine a straight line coming at you from the page. And the Z order is how those shapes essentially stack on top of each other. So if I grab this circle, you can see that it appears on top of the rectangle. If I grab the hexagon and put it up here as well, the hexagon appears on top of the two other shapes. So in this Z order, the rectangle is at the back, the circle is in the middle, and the hexagon is at the front. And that's because when these shapes are assigned to the page, they are assigned a Z order number. Now it is really easy to change the Z order. And a lot of the time when you're working with shapes in a drawing, you're going to want to make sure you know how to rearrange that Z order. So certain things appear on top of other shapes. Now, before I start making some adjustments to this Z order, I'm quickly going to save this file. So now I have this file saved. Let's make some changes to the Z order. So I'm going to click on the hexagon. And then up on the home tab in the arrange group, you can see we have some options up here, bring to front and send to back. And each of these has a drop down menu associated with them. So if I click the drop down, I've got bring forward or bring to front. Similarly, I have send backwards or send to back. So these two buttons are going to allow me to control the Z order of particular shapes. So if I say send backward to this hexagon, you can see that I've essentially changed the order. So it's going back one position because I just said send backward. Now, when you choose send backward as opposed to send to back, the difference between those two is that send backwards will essentially move the selected shape back one position in the Z order, whereas send to back will send it all the way to the last position. So because I said send backward, it's now behind the circle, but it's in front of the rectangle. If I click it again and say send to back, it is now behind both of those shapes. If I do bring forward, it's going to come forward one position or I can bring it straight to the front. I could do the same with the circle. I could say, let's say bring to front and that's going to pull that in front of the other objects. So not much more to it than that. It is fairly straightforward. So let's take a look at this in a more practical example. We're going to go back to a drawing that we were using quite a lot earlier on in the course. Now, you may remember that when I talked about some of the issues you might have with this drawing, I mentioned that you might have problems putting a lamp on top of a desk. And this demonstrates very nicely the importance of Z order. So if I select the lamp, which is currently on top of the table, if I choose send to back, you can no longer see that lamp. In order to see that lamp, I need to make sure it's the first item in the Z order. So bring to front, we'll pull that through. Now it might be that I have a shape that's behind something else. So if we just send this lamp to the back again, now I can see that there's a selection there, but it might be that you're not clicked. And so you don't actually realize that there is another shape behind the desk. 
So what I would need to do here would be to select the desk and then make sure that I send that to back to reveal anything that's hiding behind it. Now I'm going to add another shape to this drawing and we're going to use this one here, man working. I'm going to drag him onto the diagram and you can see that very nicely he is on top of the chair shape. So I can place him on that chair and everything looks good. Now if for some reason when you drag this shape onto the drawing, the chair appears to be on top of the man, all you would need to do is select him and say bring to front to make that look correct. Now another thing that's worth knowing about when it comes to shapes and alignment is something called the anchor shape. Now we've already looked at alignment quite a bit already, but there are other some alignment options. And these options really require you to understand the concept of the anchor shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these three shapes. So I'm gonna draw a big rectangle around the outside and let go. Now what you might notice here is that one of those shapes has a thicker border to the others. So if you take a look at the rectangle, that blue border is slightly thicker than the other two shapes. Now the shape that has the thicker border is what we call the anchor shape. So having made this selection, I'm gonna jump up to the home tab and go into my alignment tools. And in here, I have a number of different options. So if I select align left, you can see what Visio does. It basically uses the anchor shape as the reference. If I was to choose something like align top, again, all of the other shapes are going to align to the top of the anchor shape, which in this case is the rectangle. Align center, it's gonna be pretty much the same. Align middle, again, that rectangle is being used as the reference point. Now, whilst we have these three shapes selected, let's take a look at this position option in the arrange group, because this is where you'll find your distribution options. Now in this position dropdown, I also have uh, more distribute options. And this is gonna pull up this little distribute shapes dialog box where you have some options when it comes to vertical distribution and also horizontal distribution. And the reason why I like this is because you get a little visual representation here of exactly how that's going to distribute your shapes in relation to each other. So if we take a look at this one just here, the horizontal distribution, I can see that this is a horizontal to the center point of the shape. So if I click on OK, if I were to draw a line down the center of each of these shapes, you would find that the distance between those marks would be exactly even. So as I said, if you're used to using this type of tool in something like PowerPoint, it does work very different in Visio. Now the final couple of things I want to point out in here are auto align and auto space. Now these can work really well on particular types of charts. And often I find if I've been working on an extensive drawing, when I finish and I decide to space everything out evenly, auto align and space can often do a really good job. So let's go back to our answer for exercise eight. Now the current spacing and layout of this particular cross-functional flowchart isn't too bad. I may not even consider doing an auto align or space on this particular diagram because I'm reasonably happy with how it looks anyway. But if you do have a diagram that's maybe a little bit more messy or a bit uneven in the way that it looks, then these two options are really going to help you out. So what you need to do is control A, which is basically going to select everything on your diagram up to the position drop down and you have auto align and space. And if I select this, you saw that it kind of made some adjustments to this to make this a little bit more even and a little bit more accurate. So this is a really good way of tidying up a messy flowchart. Now just bear in mind that you don't have to apply this just to flowcharts, it can be used on any particular diagram or drawing that you're doing. So don't forget about that really useful little option that you have in that position drop down. That's it for this lesson, I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.